Welcome to the Dream Big, My Friend podcast, where you will find all the inspiration you need to begin living a more intentional life today. Because no matter where you are right now in life, it's never too late to dream big, my friend. And now here's your host, Francis Vitakovic. Hello, my friends. This is Francis Vitakovic, and you are listening to the Dream Big, My Friend podcast. Today, we are talking about when your mojo is shot. And when I say shot, I mean it feels like it's completely dead and buried, and you have no idea when it will ever surface again. So, just so we're clear, when I say the word mojo, it's almost like a slang term here in Australia for like your motivation, when you're in the zone, when you're performing at your best, it's just like everything's going in the flow. Conversely, when your mojo is shot or dead or just completely gone, you feel like you are in a total slump. You're not in the mood to do anything. And I have to say, like, this is quite distinct from when I've spoken before about being stuck in limbo land, when like you're in a particular place and you know where you want to go and you just can't get there. And you feel like there's that resistance in getting you to take action, but often it's because of confusion or indecision or procrastination. This, when you lose your mojo, feels different. It really does feel like you have become this deflated balloon and you are looking for some way to like pump yourself up with air so that you can fly again in that sky and feel totally free. But for now, it's not there. Now, the reason that I'm talking about this topic today is because during lockdown, I feel like I lost my mojo a few times. And my solution to this problem is a, could potentially be a little bit different from the way most coaches might approach it. So the interesting thing is that whenever I felt this flat, oh, I just do not want to do anything. I noticed it happened because number one, I actually really needed a break. Now, here's the thing, and I'm not sure if you've noted this yourself, but before lockdown, my family, we had a predictable routine. The kids went to school throughout the week. I would do my work. My husband would go to work. We'd come home, would relax on the weekend. We'd always organize something to go out and sort of like unwind. Come school holidays, we would take little trips away. We might go away for a week. There was a clear distinction between work and play. And then the restrictions happened and those lines were suddenly blurred. We were home all the time, which to some might feel like a total break. And I know that I personally have enjoyed, loved staying home. And I know for me, it was really tempting to think that there's no way I need a break or a rest because I technically am always home. Like staying at home once upon a time would have been considered to be the ultimate form of having a break, laying low, and this now is our everyday life. Now, I should point out that at the time of the recording, our restrictions have eased and we have so much more freedom here in Sydney. We're not restricted to just moving five kilometers outside our home. For those who are double vaccinated, we have so much more freedom, which is fantastic. But even though I'm personally talking about having lost my mojo during this lockdown period, Still stick with me because I'm going to share with you how it can actually apply to our lives even when everything feels like it's totally back to normal. So when I said that my mojo was shot, and if you've ever had that feeling before, you know what it's like. Like you look at your computer, you don't want to turn it on. You know you've got work to do, but you're just not in the mood. Like you feel really flat. So first things first, acknowledge the pain, acknowledge your feelings. You're feeling this way for a reason. There's something that's happened. So it's really important to not pretend that it doesn't exist. Acknowledge your feelings. It's so important that as humans, we learn to feel our feelings rather than trying to instantly layer it with some positive emotion, like you try to trick yourself out of feeling that negative emotion. Negative and not positive emotions are both totally normal. So that was the first thing that I did and knowledge that I was just feeling flat and what I would define as my mojo was gone. And once you've acknowledged these feelings, you need to dig deep. Ask yourself, what's going on? Like, Can you actually think of why you are feeling this way? Now, I know that your first temptation is going to be to say, I have no idea, but put your detective hat on. You know, I love that detective hat and ask yourself, well, if you did know the answer, what would you guess it would be? Now, for me, when I asked myself this same question, I said, I actually just need a break, a real break. Now, you may have noticed that it's actually really easy to have a break when you are on holidays. 
I don't know about you, but when I go on holidays, I don't take my laptop. I do not take my work with me. I actually make a conscious decision to just let everything go and to focus on relaxing and feeling at peace and just unwinding. For me, it also involves reading a lot of fiction books. I absolutely love reading. I consider it to be like the ultimate form of relaxation. I can't think of anything better than just to be lost completely in an amazing story. But you may be wondering, what if I don't have a holiday in store? Like, what if I don't have a holiday planned? How can I still get the rest that I need? How can I still refill my tank even when the kids are at all at home? even when there's no holiday on the horizon. Well, I'm going to share with you how I pulled it off at home while the kids were still homeschooling, while I was still in lockdown and able to go anywhere, how I got the rest that I needed. And number one and number two and number three, it's like this is the only thing that really can't matters is that you make a decision. You make a decision that you are going to rest and you make it your number one priority. Now, I don't know if it's just a mum thing or if it's just me because I love to be productive, but I've noticed in the past that I've often felt the best about myself when I've been busy and when I've had a lot to show for my time. It's like I actually prided myself on being busy and the busier I was and the more that I got done, the more I used my time really wisely the better I felt about myself. But where we can get ourselves into trouble if we have this mentality where the more that we do, the more we produce, the busier we are, but that business equals us providing value to the world and to our families, well, that can really backfire because what does that say about you when you're actually doing nothing? And I know this is something I've had to work on because I've prided myself on being productive and always being busy. And so I've really struggled with just sitting down and having a rest. And notice if you ever feel the same way. Do you feel like you're a good mom if you're always playing with the kids, always cooking, always cleaning, always doing something? Do you consider yourself to be lazy if you put your feet up and read a book or magazine on the couch or take the day off and do nothing and go get your nails done, go get your hair done, just totally pamper and spoil yourself? Do you allow yourself that privilege? Do you allow yourself that time to refill your cup? Now, I'm going to bring this back to the fact that I'm talking here about when your mojo is shot. Ask yourself this question. Could your cup be empty? Could your tank be needing a refill? Because often our mojo is shot when we are feeling so depleted, when we are feeling so drained and we simply need a rest. And if you're hearing me say that and and thinking, no, 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 that is not my problem. My mojo is shot for a completely different reason. Trust me, it is. I want you to stick with me anyway. Consider that you might need a rest. Consider that you might need that little break. Give yourself permission to do nothing. Because you know what happens Like when you have lost your mojo and when it feels like it's gone, you end up doing nothing anyway, but then you're stressing about the fact that you're not doing anything. So let's just assume that for a few days, it's not going to be there, but you're going to enjoy yourself in the meantime. So what I personally did was give myself permission to do nothing. Like I read and read and read book after book after book. I rested, I hung out with my kids, I cooked, I went for walks and just enjoyed myself. I enjoyed the fact that I gave myself permission to have a rest. And now you're probably wondering, okay, so step one was acknowledging the fact that my mojo has disappeared. So I'm going to acknowledge that feeling. Step two was just to assume that you might need a break. Assume it is true, even though you're like so insistent that it's not. Give yourself a few days off anyway, so rather than stressing about the fact that you're not doing anything, you're going to give yourself permission instead to have fun. But then what comes next? So let's just say you have a few days, like if you gave yourself three days to have a break and not do any work and you return and you still don't feel like the mojo is there to be found, that is when you go looking for it. You actively need to search for your motivation, like you need to go hunting it down. Now, remember, you're feeling rested. You're feeling really good. Once your cup is full, it is so much easier for your mojo to come back to you. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how do I find my mojo when it's completely disappeared? I swear to God, it's like I think it's run off to another country. Well, you sit down and you get started with a little baby step doing what needs to be done. Now, I've spoken before about the benefit of doing what needs to be done, even if you don't feel like it, 
And once you've filled your cup, once you've had your break, once you've given yourself permission to rest and relax and not be so busy, you ease yourself to slowly back into life, back into work, back into whatever you had lost your motivation for. Start really small and take the action anyway. The first step to getting started and getting anywhere is just decide that you're not going to stay where you are anymore, that you're ready to move on. Like you make that conscious decision. Now, of course, it's important that your priorities are straight, like was a reason for your lack of mojo because you're working on something that you just had no desire to do. I love this quote by Simon Sinek who said, working hard for something we don't care about is called stressed. Working hard for something we love is called passion. Now, even if you're about passionate about something, that's not to say that you can't lose your mojo, but that's completely different from losing your mojo because your heart just like is falling and refusing to do something because it actually simply doesn't want to do it. And you can take it as a sign. If your mojo has disappeared because you've lost your passion and excitement for doing whatever task you have had at hand, consider that a change might be in order. But you know deep down, like ask your head and ask your heart. Ask both, not just one and not the other. What is the reason that I lost my mojo? Great question. Wait for an answer. There is an answer inside of you. And if the answer was simply that you were fatigued and you needed that rest, well, you know what needs to be done. We've spoken about that for the vast majority of this episode. Fill your cup. Give yourself permission to rest. But if there is something larger at play, if your mojo is shot and even when you've had that break and even when you were taking those baby steps and something is still keeping you stuck, take some time to investigate further. Take some time to journal. What exactly is holding you back? Go back and listen to my episode on exiting limbo land because there is so much information there. It's a very long episode where I offer you a really clear cut strategy for exiting limbo land. So if you've listened to this episode, taken all the steps, acknowledging the feeling, giving yourself permission to rest, and then starting small with those little baby steps and knowing that you actually have to chase your mojo down, you've got to find it as opposed to just thinking that it's going to miraculously like fall inside you and it's like it's going to be back. No, no, no. You need to go looking for it once you've filled your cup and once you've had your rest. If you are still stuck, I would definitely question, do you really want to do what needs to be done? Are some changes in order or do you just need to dig deeper? Otherwise, listen to my other episode on Limbo Land because like I said before, it is a really good one. If you have lost your mojo, I want you to know that or think of it a little bit like a missing child. If you're a parent and you've lost your child, you would never just go home and think, oh no, that's okay. I don't really need to come home with that child. Your mojo is special. It's what gives you life. It's what makes you feel motivated. It's what keeps you inspired. If you've lost it, I want you to go out there and find it again. Because life, when you have your mojo, when you are in the zone, when you just are working at your true potential, it truly feels so awesome. So my friend, take care as always. And I can't wait to catch you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening. If you loved this episode, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out. And if you really loved it, you can show your support by leaving a review on iTunes. For more inspiration, head over to dreambigmyfriend.com, where you will find even more content for all the dreamers out there. Until next time, dream big, my friends.